But first, tax and how multinational companies get their earnings out of New Zealand with barely a cursory wave to the IRD in some cases. In October of last year, I worked on a podcast about Apple New Zealand. They refused to be interviewed, but their books told a pretty striking story. Over 90% of their revenue gone in costs, even though their operation in New Zealand is tiny. Apple New Zealand had revenue of $568 million and costs of $551 million. That meant their total New Zealand tax bill was $6.8 million, on revenue of $568 million. Apple wouldn't talk, but the OECD would. Pascal Sanaman is the Director for Tax Policy and Administration at the OECD. They're working on addressing things like base erosion and profit shifting. In short, and in very simple terms, multinational companies declare their costs in higher tax territories and declare their profits in lower tax territories. The OECD put a figure on how much that legal practice is costing global governments in tax revenue, and it's incredible. It tries to describe how much tax avoidance by multinationals cost to, to the um, revenues of the different countries across the world. So uh, $100 billion to $240 billion a year for the whole world is again a conservative estimate. Yes, that's right. The world loses up to a quarter of a trillion dollars in revenue every year due to this legal form of tax avoidance. In fact, Pascal Sanaman told me the OECD thinks that's a conservative estimate. Today, Matt Nippert of the New Zealand Herald did a really fine job of broadening out, looking at other multinational companies whose tax bills seem low relative to their revenue. You can find that on the New Zealand Herald's website. Shortly, we'll talk to Revenue Minister Michael Woodhouse. But Don Christie was featured in Matt Nippert's article for the New Zealand Herald. He's the co-chair of NZ Rise, an association of New Zealand-owned and operated digital businesses. He's also a director of Catalyst IT, and he joins me now live from the Wellington studio. Don it's great to have you with us. We often talk about level playing fields, this base erosion and profit shifting, the ability for multinational companies to declare profits in low tax territories and costs in high tax territories means the playing field isn't level at all, is it? No, it's, it's incredibly hard to compete if you're a local business, wherever you happen to be in the world, uh, where effectively um, multinationals that behave in this way, and, and just be clear, it's not all multinationals that do this but the multinationals that behave in this way uh, are able to effectively undercut cut any R&D and investment and so on that we might want to make ourselves in our own countries and in our own uh, businesses. So your competitors, if they're multinationals, do have the potential to legally put costs in New Zealand, shift profits to a place where the tax is much lower, and therefore pay much lower rates of tax than you have to pay as a New Zealand company? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you just look at uh, the cloud companies, for example, the uh, Googles and the Amazons of this world. Last time I looked, uh, Amazon had one employee in New Zealand and Google had two. Uh, cloud companies in New Zealand, such as WebDrive, uh, Datacom and Catalyst, are having to compete with these organisations. And the money that our government and uh, individuals pay to these companies never touches a side. In fact, Matt, although he's done a brilliant job, hasn't even been able to scratch the surface of those revenues because they're not declared anywhere in New Zealand. So what does that mean for a New Zealand business trying to compete? Well, it means that, uh, let's say if I've got a, a government department uh, coming to me looking to do business with me, maybe buy uh, cloud services off me, um, they will look at my, my base price and say, well, you're 10% higher than uh, AWS or somebody like that. Whereas the reality is, if you did a proper economic uh, impact assessment, uh, we'd be, you'd have to take about 30% off our, off our pricing to get a fair comparison of what we're ploughing back into the economy in terms of um, taxes that our employees earn, taxes that we pay as corporates, GST and so on and so forth, all of which is avoided by um, other organisations. Revenue Minister Michael Woodhouse is standing by. He'll be listening to this. What would you like to say to him? What would you like to see done to make this legal practice less easy to do? Well, there's, there's always the um, international issues that, that kind of is being used by um, inland revenue and, and generally politicians as a whole, not just you know, the current government, 
as an excuse for inaction. They kind of say, oh, well, the OECD has to act before we can do anything. And I think that's a, a huge mistake. What New Zealand can do in a number of ways, first of all, they can change our own tax laws, um, certainly get rid of double taxing which, uh, on international revenues, which encourages bad behaviour. Um, but more sensibly, government agencies who spend 30 to 40 percent of our GDP across the board can do some economic uh, impact assessment and basically say to these organisations, I'm sorry, we won't buy from you unless you behave like a good corporate citizen. We have companies like IBM New Zealand and so on who do do that and who do file credible tax returns. And so they lead by example and I absolutely have no problem at all competing with those sort of organisations. Don Christie, co-chair Don Christie, co -chair of NZ Rise, an association of New Zealand owned and operated digital businesses and also director of Catalyst IT. Thank you so much for joining us, Don. Let's bring in now Revenue Minister Michael Woodhouse, who's joining us on the line from the Need Minister. We appreciate you joining us at short notice too, so we're very grateful. What do you say in response to Don Christie and to lots of people like him who are making the same point? Well, look, I think what we heard was his articulation of what is a very, very complex picture to ensure that those multinational companies pay their fair share of tax. I think that's what everybody would uh, agree is the right thing to do. But if they're talking about the weightless sort of uh, companies like Google and Facebook, what's not clear in some of those cases is even where that revenue is being earned. So, you know, the, the Herald expose this morning was interesting. It highlighted a number of companies where turnover was high but tax paid was low. I don't necessarily agree that you can draw the conclusion that there is widespread tax avoidance going on. Well, hold on Maybe, a second. Pascal, Santa, Pascal, Santa Man, Pascal Santa Man from the OECD, and he says, he told me that the New Zealand government is working closely with the OECD and that you're being extremely supportive of their initiatives, talks about somewhere in the region of a quarter of a trillion dollars a year being lost to global governments. I think that's right. But what he would also say is the New Zealand tax framework is actually a bit of an exemplar for the avoidance of profit shifting back into other jurisdictions with things like our base erosion policies, our thin cap rules, and a number of other um, transfer pricing rules that we have in place, which probably lead the OECD in this regard. So when, so when Simon Muta, and it's interesting because in fact it's business media and business people who are leading the charge on this, so this isn't some left-wing conspiracy. When Simon Muta from Spark tells Chris Keel at the NBR or Matt Nippet at the New Zealand Herald, hey, something has to be done about this. This isn't fair. This isn't a level playing field. Are they wrong? Well, I wouldn't say that they're wrong, but what I would say is that they haven't yet come up with a thing that we uh, could be doing and not. And that, I think, underscores the notoriously complex nature of uh, global trade at the moment. What, we, what I have to be confident is that we have good, robust rules in place and enough resources deployed by the Inland Revenue Department to ensure that those companies are paying their fair share of tax. And where there is a global issue, we are contributing through the OECD initiatives to ensure that those loopholes are closed. Pascal Sinaman says that this is... The, the, the tax laws are anachronistic, that they were actually drafted to cover a world that no longer exists. That is the case, isn't it? I mean, in a way, that's a statement of the obvious. So how are they reinvented in a way that means companies like Apple can do business in New Zealand, but also that they pay the tax they should pay here? Yeah, well, look, we're already uh, introducing laws that will require uh, companies that provide, for example, weightless goods internationally to register and pay GST on that. I think that's an important development. We're looking at uh, changes to non-resident withholding tax on income earned. Uh, we're also uh, looking at the weighted goods, of course, that are now coming across the border and where the GST should be applied to those. So those are the companies that don't even have necessarily revenue um, earned in New Zealand. But I think we've got to be a bit careful not to take the Herald descriptions of high levels of turnover and low levels of tax as gospel. Take well, hold, hold on a second. If we look, if, it's a striking, it's a striking graph. I've got it open on the table beside me. $9.96 trillion of New Zealand revenue combines $1.8 billion of New Zealand tax on the face of it. Boy, well, the one thing you can say is they're very inefficient New Zealand account, uh, companies because their costs are so high. Yeah, OK. But my concern is obviously for the New Zealand income earned and the legal uh, 
um, amount of tax that is due on that taxable income being yep. paid. Take, for example, the drug companies. So we have, on the one hand, a pharmac model that the drug companies themselves say is so um, tough on their pricing that, that it's so hard to make a buck in New Zealand that they threaten to pull the plug and go away. Why would we be surprised then that despite quite a bit of turnover, there is very, very low profit being earned? I think we've got to be a bit careful not to play both sides of that coin. That's just one example of where it's important to, to look through some of that data that was revealed um, today. And my, res- my responsibility is to say, have we got a good, robust framework for the collection of income tax on that taxable income? And are we diligent in employing it? I can say yes to both of those things. I'm not suggesting for a moment there isn't more we can do, and you quite rightly point out that this is a very dynamic environment that we need to be nimble to keep up with, Uh, and that's what we're doing. Michael Woodhouse, Minister of Revenue, joining us live on the phone from Dunedin. Thank you very much.